We are typically conservative as a, as a profession and, and probably as individuals. We want more proof, and cannabis doesn't have that. And it's why he has traveled the world, to look for researchers who might have the answers. And that took him to the place many call the medical marijuana research capital. Israel. It might surprise you, but actually research into cannabis and epilepsy started here in the 1970s with studies that showed it could reduce convulsions in rats. Today, Shackelford is hoping to start clinical trials in humans there. We need to understand it well enough that they won't be reluctant to at least give it a thought, at least try it. And it's not just epilepsy, but researchers in Israel are studying a variety of illnesses. When we come back, what they're finding up close and an amazing look inside hospitals and nursing homes where patients are lighting up courtesy of the Israeli government. As the sun was rising on the ancient city of Jerusalem, the final leg of our journey was just beginning. There have been some great advances here, and I'm proud of that, obviously. Dr. Boaz Lev is with Israel's Ministry of Health. Here, they have pioneered marijuana research. They were the first to isolate THC and CBD decades ago. And now the country's ministry licensed 10,000 patients to use marijuana medicinally and has approved more than a dozen studies to treat illnesses like PTSD, pain, Crohn's disease, even cancer. Hopefully, this will prove to be the best medication. I really hope so. We're not there yet. Answers might come from places like this. It's a state-run nursing home outside of Tel Aviv. Residents here are using marijuana for pain, loss of appetite, Parkinson's disease, and dementia. Moshe Root is one of those residents. He was 77 when he smoked his first pipe of marijuana. He's 80 now, and he smokes a couple of times a day. It's to help with the pain and the hand tremors caused by a stroke. So it's a mixture of tobacco and marijuana. He even decided to light up during our interview to stop his hands from shaking. You're saying your hands are steady because of the marijuana? Zibatuach. It also helped ease a deeper pain hidden from sight. You see, Moshe is a Holocaust survivor. When his wife died a couple years ago, he was haunted by nightmares of his childhood, hiding from the Nazis. The marijuana, he says, took him out of the darkness. You dream. You fly. When you, when you smoke? Yeah. There are 19 other patients here. Scientists at Tel Aviv University are now studying their progress, and they call the results outstanding, including weight gain, improved mood, pain, and tremor reduction. But I can tell you as a doctor, it was my next stop that proved the most surprising. This is Israel's largest hospital, Sheba Medical Center. You put up your uh, medical cannabis. Amashe is using marijuana to help him with the pain and nausea from chemotherapy. Filling up the spoon, so that's your medicine inside there. Of course, I'm gonna take it out, put up the mouth. And he's doing it inside the hospital. How are you feeling? A relief, first of all, in the muscle, in the leg. And you're not worried about any, any potential damage to your body? Not at all. The opposite, actually. I, I really, I really believe I can be cancer-free for a long time if I continue uh, you know, consume cannabis. Yes, he said cancer-free. Very early studies on mice in Israel, Spain, and the United States are now showing the potential of marijuana to kill cancer cells. It's exciting research, but it is still in its infancy, and it's inconclusive. This program at Sheba is well established, and experts say a teaching tool for using marijuana in other hospitals. Do you think this could happen in the United States? 
I don't know that there's yet enough really concrete evidence of cannabis's benefit uh, that, that's satisfactory, at least in that context. I think it's going to come. But it could be slow going. The FDA has been great at approving studies, but National Institute of Drug Abuse has been really stonewalling and blocking any studies looking at therapeutic effects of cannabis because that's not their mandate. Their mandate is to look at the harms of drug use. It's very easy to blame an organization. Dr. Nora Volkoff, who is the director of NIDA, says they are not standing in the way. She claims they are not the only government institute that approves marijuana research. If you would come up with a grant that says, okay, this is going to be a treatment for drug addiction, then it would go to us. But if it's cancer, it goes to the Cancer Institute. If it is schizophrenia, it goes to NIMH. And so the institutes have a mission with certain diseases. What is clear, there are bureaucratic hoops that most researchers simply don't want to jump through. Neuroscientist Carl Hart. There are not many people studying marijuana. It's very difficult to get approval to study marijuana. What's nice about Israel is that the government is helping the research to happen. And it's research that could give hope to patients like Charlotte Figge. <laughs> Scientists in Israel are learning that marijuana use might actually protect the brain, not damage it. They've been able to show that it can decrease the amount of brain damage from head injuries right. in mice. To be able to give a medicine after the injury to reverse some of the damage, that's huge. I want to paint my nails. You want to paint your nails? I'll paint your nails. I literally see Charlotte's brain making connections that haven't been made in years. It's almost seeming to build her brain where before it seemed broken. And while scientists are still at the very early stages of knowing if this is actually happening, I can tell you it was remarkable to see her progress. In the three months since we first met her, we saw a change. She was now talking more. Say puppy. puppy. Yeah. She's horseback riding. Good girl. She even rides a bike on her own. And the special strain made for Charlotte is now named for her. It's Charlotte's Web. It is Charlotte's plant. It's Charlotte's yeah. plant. Not anymore. Now it's for all the children. More than 41 children are using Charlotte's Web here in Colorado. All of them are reporting significant seizure reduction. And there are dozens more on a wait list, hoping, praying, that a plant could change their lives, just like it did for Charlotte. I'm going to get you. You both seem very at peace. I'm very at peace, yeah. yeah. Very peaceful. We've been given a great life. You know, it's so unfortunate that Charlie has this Dravet syndrome. But thank God we've got something now that's working. Now she's doing so great today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.